Welcome back. St. Elijah's Monastery, a structure that has stood in Iraq for 1,400 years, has been leveled by the Islamic State. So sad. These satellite images acquired by the Associated Press show what used to be the Christian compound in Mosul, and that remains to be nothing more than a pile of rubble now. The site is the latest victim to fall to the hands of an ISIS attack on Christian culture in the Middle East. And for much more on this discussion, joining us now, Ryan Morrow. He is with the National Security. He is an analyst at the Clarion Project. And Father Thomas Petrie, he was the Vice President and Academic Dean at the Dominican House of Studies. Thank you both for joining us here on Newsmax Now. Well, Thanks Father, for having me. Father, first to you, tell us about this monastery and why it is so important to the history of the Christian faith. Well, this monastery was founded in 495 AD and eventually fell, passed into the custody of the Chaldean Catholics, which were really the first Christians in the Middle East long before there was even a division between Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. It has basically lived and, and stood as a testament to the history of the Iraqi people as a Christian people. Um, going back centuries, and it hasn't really been used since the mid-18th century when the monks were killed by a Shah, and it had stood in ruins until the 20th century, but it has always been a place of pilgrimage for Christians in Iraq and Christians in Mosul, a great source of pride for them. Yeah, I heard even some U.S. soldiers actually attended that church. Ryan, uh, I've been reading reports saying that Iraq's Christian population has dropped from 1.3 million to now 300,000. ISIS just seems to be relentless at trying to get Christianity out of the Middle East. What does the destruction of this monastery tell you about its objectives? Well, it tells us basically what we already have known, which is that there is a genocide going on against the Christians, the Yazidis, and others at the hands of ISIS and Al-Qaeda before them and other Islamic extremists that's been going on since 2003. And sadly, it was very predictable right from the beginning that this would happen. What ISIS says is that technically under Sharia, you're allowed to have a church um, as long as it doesn't become a symbol of idolatry. And so what they say is that because this church has historical value and people go there and they worship at it, it's a symbol of idol worship and therefore it has to be destroyed. Well, Father, we're covering this story today. Uh, and I got to admit, sometimes when I am in mass, I, I listen uh, for calls from the priest to focus on, on issues like these, trying to raise awareness about what's actually taking place in the Middle East. And, and I don't hear them very often. As Christians in this country, what should we be doing uh, to try and not only prevent this, but also raise awareness so that people know what's going on because our, our, our brothers and sisters over there are under siege? That's, yeah, that's exactly right. We need to be not only aware of this, we need to take action. I have personal friends who are priests and sisters in Iraq who are from Mosul who have been exiled to Erbil in Kurdistan along with the other Christians. I would refer you to uh, www.pilgrimchurch.com, which is an organization that specifically is in Iraq from the West, from America, um, to help these Christians who are in northern Iraq, in Kurdistan, help, helping to bring them relief. We need prayers, certainly, but yes, priests, religious, the lay faithful, we need to be more mindful of this when we're going very freely to Mass every Sunday when others are um, suffering so much in, in, in Mosul and in Kurdistan. Mm. Ryan, ISIS has cut its soldiers' pay in half. They've confirmed the death of Jihadi John. Is ISIS in any way on the retreat? There are areas where they're losing territory. Uh, we know from documents that have leaked out that they've had to cut their salaries in half. Uh, so there are signs of gains against ISIS, but still a very powerful organization that's expanding in other areas. And I think it's very true that we need to emphasize the point that the church is dropping the ball on this. Uh, churches have got to wake up, and they also need to have a tool to wake themselves up and others up. And that's why the organization I'm working for, the Clarion Project, uh, is putting out a documentary coming out in the coming months called Faith Keepers, all about the persecution of minorities, including Christians, in the Muslim world, uh, so that hopefully that begins to happen. And yes, absolutely support organizations that provide humanitarian aid. And Ryan, we're playing some of that video that you were kind enough to provide from us for that upcoming documentary. Uh, and again, before we leave, gentlemen, I just want to give everybody one more chance to give our audience the information on where they can go. Ryan, first, tell us one more time where folks can go to get more information about your about the Clarion Project and what you're working on. 
The best website to go to would be the would be clarionproject.org, and the name of the documentary that's about to be released is called Faith Keepers. And, and we'll look forward mm -hmm. to that. And Father Peachy, one more time, tell us the name of that website again so Christians here and others in this country can make sure that they are doing everything they can to prevent this type of tragedy from happening in the Middle East. Yes, it's www.pilgrimchurch.com. It's either .com or .org. I suspect it's .org. Pilgrim Church. Just Google Pilgrim Church or Persecuted Church. It'll be the number one site that comes up on Google. This is an important organization. We have to do something to help our brothers and sisters in the Middle East. The, the Cardinal Archimandrite well, of the Chaldean Catholics... It's a, it's a tragic, um, nonetheless, and unfortunately we're out of time. Tragic. Uh, Pilgrim Church, Google it, everybody. Get informed on this. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us.